You can buy real estate using your 401k? Absolutely. And that's what I'm gonna talk about on today's real estate quick investing tip. Hi there, I'm Ryan Black, real estate investor and lifestyle architect. And in today's quick investing tip, I wanna share with you one of the little known strategies that we embrace all the time as educated investors. And that is that you can actually purchase real estate using your IRA or 401k. It could be Roth, traditional, it doesn't matter. Now, most people had no idea. They thought, well, I thought you just have to invest in you know, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, kind of the traditional investments. Some folks who are a little more savvy in the investing world say, oh yeah, I know you can do that. You can, you can invest in a REIT, right? What is a REIT? A real estate investment trust. I'm not talking about that. In fact, personally, I don't really like REITs. For me, REITs are used by people who want to invest in real estate, don't really understand real estate, but they just want to get kind of dip their toes into the water. And so they'll, they'll invest in a REIT. If you really want to get in there and you want to invest and you want to see the type of returns that you can truly achieve with real estate investing, REITs are not the way to do it. So how do we do it with an IRA or a 401k? Well, if you were to call, you know, let's say Merrill Lynch or Fidelity or one of the big investment firms, right? It could be any of them. You call them up and you say, hey, I've got X amount of money in my account right now. I would like to purchase some real estate. What are they going to tell you? They're going to say, no, you can't. Now, why can't you? Because they don't offer that as a service. The fact that they don't offer it doesn't mean that you can't do it. You absolutely can. But how do you do it? You have to self-direct your retirement plan. So what is self-directing your retirement plan? Basically, that is where you take your funds and then you roll them into a third-party custodian. And there are different companies out there who offer that service. You wanna make sure that you're dealing with a reputable one. You take that, you roll your funds into there, and now you, as the owner or the beneficiary of the retirement plan, you are going to be able to self-direct where the funds need to go. Now, it's important, as you may know, there are a lot of restrictions when it comes to retirement plan funds who can touch them, how you can use them. But the cool thing is, is when you have the custodian, the third party custodian there, who is technically managing everything, you tell the custodian what you want to do. And then the custodian is the one who does it. So let's see uh, an example. We have, uh, full disclosure, we have used other people's retirement plan funds on nearly every single fix and flip that we've bought. So we love using this strategy, but we'll give you one example. There was a, a, a gentleman, we'll call him Ron because that was his name. Great, great guy, good friend of ours. And he had his money in a, uh, in a traditional you know, retirement plan in the stock market or whatever. And I can't remember, he was getting peanuts. It was like one or 2% or something. It was, he was getting hardly anything in the stock market. And so he was able to self-direct his retirement plan and then turned around and we had a deal. We said, hey, you know, we need, we need a couple hundred grand to pick up this property. And so he was able to fund the acquisition of that property. So what did we do? We talked with him and gave him all the details and information. He, he looked things over. He was pleased with what he saw. He understood how his money was going to be secured. Very important. Want to say an extra thing on this. You want to make sure anytime you're putting any money against any investment, make sure it is secured. In real estate, it is with a promissory note and a deed of trust, right? The promissory note defines the terms of the loan and then the deed of trust actually secures that money against the asset, against the property. So uh, we talked with him, everything was good. Then what did he do? He then provided the, uh, the promissory note and the deed of trust, uh, sent that information over to his custodian and said, hey, I want you to wire this amount of money to this title company for this investment. And they did. So they, the custodian wired the funds over to the title company. Title company received the money. They also received the note and the deed of trust, saw that everything was, was in line. And he essentially was the, well, he was the lender, but he was the bank, right, in that transaction. Now, Ron never touched the money. He told his custodian to send us the money. He was the one who authorized it. And then they're the ones who actually sent it. Still his money. Now, the cool thing is, is because he was self-directing his funds, he then funded the acquisition of the property. So now instead of having his money in, I don't know, some stocks or bonds or something, that money is now invested in sticks and bricks. And in this case, it was a property that was, oh, 
oh, about 115 years old. So this really cool, old, kind of Victorian-style house in uh, downtown Salt Lake City. So he was invested in that. Now, his investment, this is the coolest part, was insured. How was it insured? What happens if that building burns down? What happens? We are insured. We have hazard insurance. So he, as the person with first lien position security against that asset, would be made whole off of the insurance payment, right? So not only is he invested in something tactical, something physical, he also is insured against loss in the event that it is damaged or you know burns down or whatever with the hazard insurance. So, so cool. So his money was working for that. Obviously, according to the terms of the note, the promissory note that we had, there was an interest rate that we were paying him. The cool thing is, is we were basically able to triple his interest rate of what he was getting uh, before in the stock market by having him work with us. We, of course, negotiated that out, as, as you always do. And everyone was on the same page. We were able to get that together. And we sold it, turned around, flipped the property. Once we sold it at the closing table, when we sold the property, then we were able to, uh, well, we were required to, but we, were, we paid him back his initial principal amount, plus the interest that had accrued during that time. And that all went back directly into his self-directed re retirement plan. And then he had the money there, ready to turn around and reinvest it with somebody else. And that is the magic. I know today was more of a story than, uh, than sharing a tip, but hopefully through the story, you understand, you're able to visualize uh, perhaps the potential or the benefit that that could be for you. I want to be extremely clear here. I am not soliciting <laughs> funds from you or from anyone here. I'm simply sharing the strategy that, uh, that we use. And it is so, so powerful. You know, if that is a type of strategy that you're interested in learning more about, well, then I would say, you know, let's, let's talk or talk with, uh, you know, talk with somebody, one of your uh, accountants or attorneys, somebody who's a legal professional who can kind of vet that for you. Uh, we've been doing it. We know it works. We know it's legal. We know that it is incredible and it's actually done all around the country. We do it here in Utah, but you can do it anywhere. And um, yeah, so it's a phenomenal strategy and one that very few people know about. The cool thing is because real estate is such a leveraged investment and because of all the benefits of real estate, your returns can be pretty solid. I mean, you can get, I'm not going to drop any numbers, but you can get some really great returns that really, in my experience, significantly outpace things like the stock market when done correctly. So once again, there are no guarantees. And before you enter into any transaction with anyone, please make sure you do your due diligence, make sure everything is vetted uh, correctly and you know exactly what you're doing so that you don't get burned. But that's the tip that I have for you today. Hope you have enjoyed it. And if you are interested in learning more about real estate investing, either as an active investor, doing what we do, going out, finding properties, doing deals, or more of a passive investor, where you're simply taking your money, kind of like Ron did and said, here, have some money, make it grow and give it back to me. Well, that's more of a passive strategy. I'd love to chat with you so that uh, I can share with you a little bit more about what we do to see if it's right for you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.